we have people from all over the world on the uh, on the line and um, how do farmers feel how do farmers feel when they finish planting their seeds putting the seed on the ground and there is no rain even if they are to use water from the river or from the lake if in a particular year like in 2018 here in the midwest and around the united states everywhere here from 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 illinois to kansas to nebraska down to california there was no rain I drove to the outskirts of this city and I saw thousands of acres of cornfield, wheat field, brownish, bent by the sun to death. Nothing was working. So I answered the question, if there is no rain, what happened to the land? drought and when drought set in what happens the land get dry and crack what again somebody should tell us thank you Roslyn somebody else it becomes a wasteland, become a wasteland. so you see farming. yeah farming Farming. And with that, there will be no food that year. You you in fact that territory has to has to import food from elsewhere. You have to import food. So the prices of food, of products, of produce will increase until the rain return. I mean, you can use irrigation system to, to, to do your farming, but it is always said that the rain is better on a larger scale. I know that there are a lot of industrial agriculture that we can do on a large scale uh, through artificial means, but still they need nature. In biblical history, or instead of using history, I'll use it this way. I use history a lot because that's what uh, I my interest was, or is. In biblical tradition, drought, lack of rain, Lack of rain is a punishment from God. I hope I hope those of you on those of you on um, on Facebook can see very clearly. Hello, I'm waving. Okay. Okay. Segi, are you on the line? All right. He's not. I'm able only to add. Okay, maybe I should just do a group thing. I should just do a group thing and so that it will be easier for me to use WhatsApp to do program for people on WhatsApp sometimes. All right. Um, in biblical tradition, drought is judgment. I hope you know that. When there is no rain, it stands for judgment on the land. It means that God is punishing that territory. My job tonight is not to teach 
or not to indoctrinate you on rain, why rain, why rain is released and why rain is without. But I want you to be aware that um, lack of rain is a form of withholding of abundance. Abundance has been withheld from you for many years. Sometimes reasons that you know and I know. Sometimes reasons that I don't know, you don't know. Sometimes there are, there are clashes of powers and forces that make it impossible for abundance to be released. Rain stands for abundance. Rain stands for the blessing. That's really what rain stands for. Abundance and blessing. When rain comes, abundance comes. When rain comes, growth comes. When rain comes, fatality comes. When rain comes, nature is released to produce. When rain comes, creatures rejoice. It cool off the land. Everything grows. Everything strive. What was in the ground laying dormant, dormant will be released. Seeds that did not have time to germinate will suddenly come out. So there are a lot of good things in your life. There are lots of good things about you that has been laying in a fallow ground, covered with the sand, stick deep into the earth, laying dormant, not dead, but laying dormant and just being there. So I want you to be aware of that. I want you to be aware that there are things in you that are just there their gift and talent. Many of you think that because you have kids, you've gotten marriage, you've done your job. Many of you will be surprised that some of the judgment, severe judgment you are going to go through is because you did not ask God to send you miracle rain to release your seeds that are lying dormant including your financial seeds that are lying buried in the ground by forces of humans and forces of darkness. Mary, can you mute your phone, please? Thank you. There is noise coming from your side. Thank you. So, um, uh oh, it's not Mary. It's coming from the, Mary, it's not you, it's not you. It's coming from the uh, the conference line. There have been a lot of good things you've done that have been buried, covered. The reward of it has been buried and covered. You've you've and so you've stopped doing good things to anybody, which I don't blame you. I too have stopped because you know human nature. You can never satisfy them. One thing you didn't do for a human being will be the reason that they don't want you no more. And the thousand things you did for them, they forget it very easily. That's how human brain works. That's how human mind works. One thing they demand of you that you didn't give to them, you didn't buy for them, you didn't sit down to listen to them becomes the biggest problem of their lives. And the billion things you did for them is easily for, forgotten. That's why the Bible says that Jesus did not, he did not give himself over to any human being. He didn't trust no human being. That's why outside his disciples, he had a small circle of friends and families, not, not from, not biological, that he moved with outside his disciples. And that was very strange for me to see this kind of thing in, in 
in the New Testament tradition. That the houses of Jesus' disciples was not where he frequented. That Andrew, Philip, Matthew, Peter, Bartholomew, etc. Those were not the people that Jesus mingled and flowed with. There were other people that we don't hear their names until during the crucifixion, the narrative of the crucifixion, and, and after his resurrection, we begin to see names appear that we've never heard before. And those were the real disciples of Jesus. So the 12 disciples were actually staff. They were paid staff of Jesus. Yeah. And then the 72 and 120 were volunteered people that he sent to go and work. But when it come to his friends, even though Jesus said he called them friends and all of that, that was that was when he was preparing them for his death. And after his resurrection, he started to talk to them on a very friendly terms, on a personal level. We don't really see that before the crucifixion. There's something that the Holy Spirit has taught me today that is going to make the way I do our, our broadcast to be different. So that we will have we will have services that we are only going to teach. And those will be few. The major things will be the release of the phenomena, the release of miracles, because that's really what people want. People are not interested in teaching and, and all of that. They are not interested in instruction. Our generation is not interested in instruction whatsoever. They are more interested in entertainment they are more interested in the electronics and social medias. They are more interested in food and drink, drugs and sex, getting into debt and credit card. They are more interested in the culture of death and debt more than the culture of life and freedom. So many things, so many things that the Holy Spirit told me Mary, I think I dictated that to you a while back. There are things that has happened in your life that you regretted the decision that you've made. From today, your job is not to regret the things that you've done. Whether it was your mistake or other people's mistakes, or you inherited problems. You were born into problems that were already existential in your, in your family history. Those who will dominate the earth, those who will do very well in life, are those who are not going to live in guilt and regret. If you will be able to overcome your mood swings, your moodiness, your guiltiness, your shame, then you can be a, a real businessman and a woman. Because real business men and women do not sit, they do not indulge in regret. I hope you know that. That's why majority of people in the world are poor. Because they indulge in what they didn't accomplish, what they did not do, what their ex did for, uh, against them, what this person did for or uh, against them. Real wealthy people don't have time for that. They have time for the new, for the next product. Where is an open door for them to sell the new services, to provide the next services, or to sell the next product? That's what they're interested in. So even if they are bankrupt, even if their sale is low, even if they don't have any money, top businessmen and women will never tell you their problems. They will never tell you the disaster they are going through because they don't have time to indulge in moodiness and swing moodiness, swing moods, and all that things that we go through. And I've learned that very quickly. You 
You see, if many of you were Donald, Donald Trump, you would have committed suicide or died or fled the United States. Go and look at how much debt that man has on his back, on his behind. Go and look at how, how many bankruptcy he has gone through. Although people are trying to say, oh, he used that to get money from government. No, 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 no. Because he's really not a businessman. He's a salesman. He doesn't own anything. He follows a business principle that says, never use, well, I'm not going to tell you guys, it will be too good. I will stop there. I'm not going to release business principles. No, not me. I need to be paid for it. So let's pass on. <clears throat> he doesn't own anything. It's other people's money. Investors are the owners of every room, every golf course, every room in his hotel. His real estate are owned by individuals, families. He's just a manager for them. Really smart. Do you see Trump stock on Wall Street? He doesn't own no stocks. The, the greatest businesses on earth, the greatest businesses on earth, whether cologne, fashion, cars, electronics, they belong to families. And Nancy, thank you very much. Nancy, are you on the line? Yeah, thank you very much for sitting me down and educating me on how I should run my business and the ministry. Thank you very much, okay? You don't want to suffer and spend nights, sleepless nights, sickness, and a few people will come along after you've succeeded to vote you out and take over what? what you built and since they 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 did it to steve job of apple that man became damaged and never recovered from it god has seen your suffering god has seen your shame God has seen your inability to, to be detailed and to plan. And because of that, people have fooled you. God has seen you are looking for the easy way out. So you went to pastors and doctors and priests and bishops and all kind of people. You listen to prophecies and they fool you as though that's not enough. You keep running, thinking that one day, you will run into the best things of life. And the more you run towards happiness, the more happiness has wings and fly away from you. And you never ask yourself why. Right from yesterday, I discovered that the cloud has opened the innocency of God. the power of God, the presence of God, the prosperity of God, the joy of God that we call happiness. Joy is God's kind of happiness, although it's bigger than earthly happiness. It's a power of his own. Has descended from the 24th of July. And I am aware that the open cloud is going to last till the 30th. See, you, you are never told everything. It comes sometime in bits and pieces. So the open cloud will remain. I never knew that, for example, when I celebrate the day and the month I was born, is this okay? That's an earthly thing. 
But the most important one that God focuses from now on, as what I'm saying, seems to be more on the anniversary of my assignment. So my assignment is greater than my birth. My assignment is bigger than me. So you see, just a few days to the day of my ordination comes the open cloud. Not just for me, but for my partners. If you begin to enjoy the phenomena, the phenomena, phenomena means the actions, the acts of God for you. So let me tell all of you what I was told to share with you today, this evening, this night. The world in which you were born into is already organized into classes and levels. The poor, the middle class, and the rich. In some countries, in some countries, it is divided into the rich and the poor, period. The educated and the illiterate. God said that I shall tell you to search the Old Testament and the New Testament so that you know how the miracle reign, why and how it operates. There are offices you cannot knock its door. There are people that you cannot approach because they are in the high class. Doesn't matter whether they are Christian or not. There are things that you need, you cannot get it because you don't have the money and you do not have the connections. These are all drought and famine. There are prayers you prayed, they have never been answered. Tithes and offerings you've given, they have not yet been. The addition has not happened, neither the multiplication. And there are reasons for all of this. God said that I shall tell you to go and search biblical tradition, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the Old Testament, the New, that you will see what he does. And instantly, instantly they transfer their thoughts into my, my spirit, or my mind, I don't know which one it was. And this is what it is. And this is very, very fascinating. Extremely fascinating. You see, a queen became arrogant and they went to look for virgins to be trained, to be trained to become nobles and royal, to be trained in the, who is that? The, the, the young girls were brought in to be trained in the art of nobility and royalty. Because of what has happened, divinity used that problem to create a door for a smart, intelligent, wise, and a woman who understand order and honor, Esther. A king has a dream in Egypt. Another king has a dream in Babylon, in medo -Pesia. And that was how history was twisted and changed to favor Joseph and the rest of humanity and to favor Daniel and the rest of humanity. When the reign of God falls, things are turned off and things are switched back on. 
There are things that has been switched off, turned off, and you don't even know. Including your physical body. There are things in your bodies that something has hit it and you don't even know what it is. People can send ghosts to you. People can send demons to you. People can send a blow to you. People can send cancer. People can send high blood pressure. All these things, there are the ones that are nature. By, by nature produces it in people. But there are majority of it that are sent by humans are sent by the envy of another kingdom, kingdom of darkness. If you live in fear of human beings and kingdom of darkness, you will never be rich. And anything you struggle to have, others will take it from you. God sent rain like he has started yesterday. And this, this will continue. It will continue to fall on my partners and on me. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30. Seven days. Seven days. That's incredible. For seven days. We are going to experience phenomena and miracles. How many of you want to experience miracles? The reign of miracles. Amen. Yes, yes. I want to experience miracles. Okay. Okay. During, yeah, during the afternoon session, we did share when we say that God is my rock and my salvation. Salvation is not just you being reconnected back to God through Jesus. It is the Father. It is Jesus. It is the Holy Ghost. It is angels and human beings going on shopping for you and this is not i'm not talking about spiritual things unless what you desire from god is spiritual if it has to do with the mind realm that's they will go shopping for you for you to advance say education training all of that if that is the way that you are going into your assignment what we are talking about are physical things so the rain is falling for different things for different people based on what you've prayed about. There are people who are praying for spiritual gift. The rain will fall for you towards that. There are people who are praying for the three kinds. The spirit, the mind, and the, and the physical things. I saw money. I saw money raining from the sky. I saw money raining from the sky. I saw money raining from the sky. I saw different kinds of cars and trucks and SUVs and limousines, different kind of cars. Some I've never seen before. They were being thrown down from the sky. Don't ask me whether they they make cars in heaven because I don't know. I know that they have chariots. If they have chariots and also chariots of fire, what do you think that they will not have? Because you are talking about one thing I want to let you know very strongly is this. The people up there have more sophisticated electronics Airplanes. 
they have most sophisticated nuclear, atomic, all kind of stuff you can think of. The ass is, these people are like billions of years ahead of what we are trying to do. I just want you to be aware of this so that stop thinking of heaven as one little place that is struggling. Simply because your prayer wasn't answered, so you begin to see heaven and God and Jesus as because when you begin to hear of Jesus being born as a baby, you begin to make him more human than he is supposed to be. Jesus is God. If you didn't know him, know it. He is not the Father, He is not the Holy Ghost. He's one of them. They are not poor and broke people, sick people out there. They are not looking for money. They are not campaigning and begging people for gold, for silver, for bronze, for sapphires, for diamonds, and other gemstones that I don't even know the names. Because I told you the other day, each angel, what they put on, it's more than a billion dollars if you were to put it in the market. So stop stop seeing God as somebody you are struggling with to convince to give you something. Those days are over. So that the little millions that you have be, is something that makes you arrogant and stupid and foolish. And you forgot that you watch television and you see people who have made billions and they lost it all. Or a few thousands make you think that you've arrived at money. I want the rain to fall on you spiritually and in your mind in such a way that Every gift that is in you that you will have died with, surfaces begin to sprout and grow. Everything that was held back, the rain should make it come up. Everything that was stopped, another signboard should be in place of the stop that says enter. Instead of stop, you have a signboard that says enter or go in. Every seed, no matter what kind of seed, must begin to grow. There are two kinds of people God wants to bless. Those who want immediate cash to spend and those who want money for investment. I need both. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I need both too. Uh-huh. I need both. I need both too. Yeah. Those who want money for investment become leaders and rulers. Those who want cash money become followers. <laughs> if all you're looking for is money to spend, to, to, to buy clothes, buy perfume, buy jewelry, buy a new car, buy a house, you will just be a follower. You need to have both cash money to buy those things and investment money to make money. Every one of you is God's investment. I want you to begin to see yourself today as God's business. So that as the rain falls on you, it is falling on God's business and nobody can stop your business. Nobody can come and lock up your business. Because, because many of you have been on a lockdown. Your businesses have been on a lockdown, but now the rain comes. Here comes the rain. Hallelujah. So let's begin to sing a song. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. 
we give you honor, hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, hallelujah. We give you all the glory, God. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Ooh, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore thee. Angels bow before thee. What a mighty God we say. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we say. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we say. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore thee. Angels bow before thee. What a mighty God we send. I want you, I want you to raise your hands and make up your own song and sing it aloud. I want the kingdom of darkness to hear you singing. Stop hiding, stop hiding your Christianity. I want you to stand up if you are not at your job. I want you to sing and dance. Don't worry about who is looking at you or, look, or, or, or don't worry about what another person is singing. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want you to take this time to dance for God, to sing for him. Start your own song. If you have an instrument to beat, beat it. I don't care. If you have a drum, you have a tambourine, you have a bell. If you don't have any of that, go and get a pot. Go and get your dishes. Get a spoon. Beat it and sing. Sing it. Let God hear you and let him be happy for you once in your lifetime. Wow. 